I honestly thought that I was done talking about anything pertaining to this affirmative action situation because you know it's been a couple days since the last time you heard me talk anything pertaining to this. It's probably been longer than that. Until I came across this article right here from the New York Post that's dated July 4th, 2023. Now, one of the last things I said in that particular video, which was the last video I did on the affirmative action is gone. Part two was were pertaining to legacy emissions and how that's one of the four things that I can remember that's not going to be touched when it comes to affirmative action. Well, fast forward to this article where it's saying Harvard is being sued over overwhelmingly white legacy admissions. Uh oh. It's about to get real heated. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Black people, you can comment on this, give your take on it, but don't come out in this trying to defend any of it or trying to jump in between the crossfire. Just let it let the bodies fall where they lay. All I'm doing is I'm talking about it, but I know I have no dog in this fight and neither do you. But I'm going to go ahead now and read the article and see what they're talking about. An advocacy group has filed a federal civil right complaint against Harvard College, alleging that it favors the overwhelmingly white group of legacy candidates less than a week after the U.S. Supreme Court struck down affirmative action in higher education. The nonprofit lawyers for civil rights filed the complaint Monday on behalf of Chica Project, the African Community Economic Development of New England and the D Greater Boston Latino Network. The group is challenging Harvard's discriminatory practice of giving preferential treatment in the admissions process to applicants with familial ties to wealthy donors and alumni or legacy applicants, it said in a statement. Now, pay attention to who this group, what this group is. It says on behalf of the Chica Project, the African Community Economic Development of New England and the Greater Boston Latino Network. I can pinpoint two of those just based on the name when it says African. That's definitely not FBA. That's coming straight off the continent. And then it says the about the Latino south of the Bordarian. That's pretty much uh, uh, standard. But I'm going to look up what that Chica project is and who they represent. The complaint alleging widespread violations of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was filed with the U.S. Department of Education Office for Civil Rights Lawyers for Civil Rights announced. The Boston-based group noted that the complaint comes on the heels of last week's U.S. Supreme Court ruling that limited the ability to consider race in college admissions and argue that it is even more imperative now to eliminate policies that systematically disadvantage students of color. In its complaint, Lawyers for Civil Rights said that 70% of the Ivy League schools donor related and legacy applicants are white. Donor related applicants are nearly seven times more likely to be admitted than non-donor related applicants and legacies are nearly six times more likely to be admitted, according to the statement. For the class of 2019, about 28% of the students were legacies with a parent or other relative who attended Harvard, the group said. Qualified and highly deserving applicants of color are harmed as a result as admission slots are given instead, of to, instead to the overwhelmingly white applicants who benefit from Harvard's legacy and donor preferences. Even worse, this preferential treatment has nothing to do with an applicant's merit. Instead, it is an unfair and unearned benefit that is conferred solely based on the family that the applicant is born into. This custom, pattern, and practice is exclusionary and discriminatory. It is severely disadvantages and harms applicants of color's lawyers for civil rights added. Michael Kippins, a litigation fellow with the group, called for Harvard to end its practice of giving a leg up to the children of wealthy donors and alumni who have done nothing to deserve it must end. This preferential treatment overwhelmingly goes to white applicants and harms efforts to diversify. Ivan Espinoza Magical, LCR's executive director, said there is no there's no birthright to Harvard. As the Supreme Court recently noted, eliminating racial discrimination means eliminating all of it. There is, should be no way to identify who your parents are in the college application process, he said in a statement. Well, actually, the part that they're talking about, you're talking about the racial aspect of it. This legacy part is completely different. 
So actually, there is two different things. So you are actually fighting now another battle. But again, like I said, this has nothing to do with us. We got our own fish to fry. Let them deal with that. <laughs> Why are we rewarding children for privileges and advantages accrued by prior generations? Your family's last name and the size of your bank account are not a measure of merit and should have no bearing on the college admissions process, Espinosa Magical added. Harvard said it would not comment on the complaint. Last week, the university reaffirmed its commitment to the fundamental principle that deep and transformative teaching, learning, and research depend upon a community compromising, comprising people of many backgrounds, perspectives, and lived experiences, the university said in a statement. As we said in the weeks and months ahead, the university will determine how to preserve our essential values consistent with the court's new precedent, it added. Last week, President Joe Biden suggested that universities should rethink the practice, saying legacy admissions expand privilege instead of opportunity. Now, I'm going to say this. If you are a person that got into a school based on legacy admissions, you should not be talking. Because that'll make you sound real hypocritical and very contradictory. Several congressional Democrats demanded an end to the policy in light of the Supreme Court's decision, along with Republicans, including Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, who was vying for the GOP presidential nomination, which I highly doubt he's going to get very far. The court struck down affirmative action programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, ruling that both institutions were in violation of the 14th Amendment and federal rights, federal civil rights. An Associated Press survey of the most selective colleges in the U.S. last year found that legacy students in the freshman class ranged from 4 to 23 percent. So I went to the Chica Project dot org website and this is what i came across on their front page and i should have known that's what this meant when i saw the word but i just wanted to be sure and it says chica any young latina or woman of color with potential and they all have potential and it says now what two young women call each other affectionately in support solidarity and sisterhood at the intersections of race and gender chica's project mission is to close the opportunity to divide for latinas and other women of color by empowering them with the skills, confidence, and network necessary to thrive personally and professionally. So this was that other group that I said I needed to look into to see who they are and what they and how they're inserting themselves in there. So basically what they're doing is they're piggybacking off of what happened with the Asians and striking down affirmative action just at these two schools. And now you have this program plus the other two that i mentioned which deals with latinos and africans coming together to try to strike down the legacy admissions part i said this is going to be one hell of a fight because now you got all these groups now literally going at war mainly with pc because affirmative action as we all know mainly affected white women they like to claim themselves to be a minority i do not so they got that one. So now they are literally piling on with these other groups. Like I said, us over here, this ain't our fight. Let them deal with it. We got our own stuff. We got to sort out. It's a lot of straightening we got on going on that we need to handle. Let them engage in whatever it is that they have going on. And while we don't have a dog in this fight, their fight that they have going on is going to be a very interesting one indeed. But I think my biggest question to my my subscribers is, who do you think is going to come out on top? Who do you think is going to be the victor? Who, who, who do you think is going to rise to the occasion and actually win this battle? Do you think it's going to be the people that's going against the legacy admissions or the legacy admissions itself? Because I'm going to be completely honest. They, like the Asian American community, are fighting an uphill battle that I don't think that they are going to win. If I was them, I wouldn't go completely all the way in with the situation right here. Because um, when you think about legacy admissions, that's basically donor money, like they said. It's money that's get, it's contributed to the school. It could be people that went to the school, uh, people who donate money to the school. So, of course, they're going to look to bring in that kid because, you know, money talks. You know what you, we already know what walks so the thing is if you in legacy admissions and you know the don't the, the donor money starts going in that means that that's less money that the school is going to get 
and then everything else around it will start to crumble. And then now people are going to look right at these groups that helped to do that. And then they're going to become the target. And like I said, black people, FBA, don't get involved with this. Let them take the slings and arrows while we just move out of the way. We do our thing. Let them do whatever it is that they got to do and just kind of chalk it up as, hey, next case. In the meantime, in between time, this would be a good time for a lot of FBA to shift gears if they haven't already and start going to HBCUs, get those numbers back up, because I'm telling you right now, when this huge incoming L heads their way, guess who's going to be starting to head the HBCU route? as a last resort if they do choose to want to still go to school and something else i didn't think about is what about these other schools these other pwis these they're not ivy league schools but what's going to happen when they start to catch on to what they're doing and they say no we're not letting you in either i'm like they have no idea how much of a loss they have created for themselves now because in the moment it's it feels good to have what looks like a symbolic win or symbolic victory but at the end of the day while symbolics it's also pseudo as well now you got to ask yourself a question which one weighs more the symbolic victory or the pseudo one i'm gonna go with the latter because they are about to get the biggest slap in the face heard worldwide and again like i said i will not into the crossfire to try to stop it let's just say this is a way of nature taking its course 